Hello, I'm Christopher Springman, and you're listening to Neff Talk, a podcast series created with nephrologists in mind from Satellite Healthcare, a not-for-profit dialysis provider that leads the industry in home therapies while supporting clinical research. Cultural competency is the delivery of healthcare services that meet the social, cultural, and even the food needs of patients. And that's a top priority for our next guest, registered dietitian Rory Pace, Satellite Healthcare's Director of Nutrition Services, who's responsible for overseeing the clinical practice of some 110 dietitians at 80 centers operating in six states. Rory, welcome to Neff Talk. It is great to have you on the show. I'm so glad to be here. Let's discuss your job as a registered dietitian and, of course, Director of Nutrition Services at Satellite Healthcare. Can you give me an overview of the scope of your work, please? Happy to, Chris. I am responsible for overseeing the clinical practice of about 110 dietitians across the entire satellite enterprise. And so it is a very large group, and I'm responsible for the practice piece of the dietitian's job. So nutrition is a science, and our practice as dietitians is evidence-based, and so I am responsible for keeping our registered dietitian nutritionists current with their knowledge and their clinical practice, Uh, again, all to keep them current so that they can provide the best quality cutting edge care to our patients. When a dialysis patient is admitted for the first time at a center, or perhaps they're doing home dialysis, what are their nephrologist concerns and expectations with regard to dietary care? Well, Chris, I've worked as a dietitian at Satellite Healthcare for about 21 years now, and I've really enjoyed the opportunity to develop relationships with the nephrologists who work with us. Uh, Some of the aspects that we do partner with the nephrologists in are mineral and bone disease or bone disorder management, a management of fluid balance, uh, and oversight of adequacy of dialysis. Um, of course, that's in addition to the medical nutrition therapy that we routinely are providing that makes up the bulk of our practice. How important is family support and partnering on diet issues? I'm thinking specifically about lifestyle medicine issues where family members and the patient meet with a dietitian to discuss a family dietary strategy that simplifies shopping and food preparation, but still meets your goals for the patient. It is very important for registered dietitians to partner with family members or other caregivers to help patients achieve their nutrition and health goals. You know, often we find that it's not the patient who does the shopping for food or prepares the meals. And so we always make an effort to identify who those support people are uh, and include them in the goal setting, in the kind of care planning um, and the education instruction and follow up. The other aspect here is that because diabetes and hypertension are the causes of the majority of, of CKD, chronic kidney disease, both have aspects or or opportunities for nutrition and lifestyle management, as well as genetic components involving family members in how the nutrition plan is developed and carried out for the patient uh, may very well have benefit beyond just the individual patient. That segues very, very nicely into my next question. Do family cultural food traditions and preferences play a part in your work? This is a really good point, Chris, and this is a a competency and really an expectation for us as dietitians and nutrition professionals uh, is to recognize all the many roles that food plays in our lives. It's not just a physiological requirement for nourishment. It can have many other roles or implications like culture, religion, comfort, and in my opinion, all of these things are equally important. And so at Satellite, we use an individualized approach to developing the nutrition plans for each patient so that we can 
be aware of and sensitive to those aspects of, of food and nutrition and diet for each patient. We also try to involve and engage the patient in that um, planning and goal setting process to make sure that we can accommodate those cultural food preferences, eating patterns, and favorite foods. For example, salt consumption. Salt, much like sugar, is everywhere. So why is controlling salt so important to the dialysis patient's ongoing health? You're right. Salt is everywhere. And it is a challenge to the health of our patients on dialysis and really to all of us as a society. A high salt intake raises blood pressure, and high blood pressure is the second leading cause of kidney disease. So limiting salt intake if you have chronic kidney disease or high blood pressure can help keep kidneys healthier longer. For our patients with kidney disease who've reached the stage of dialysis, because their kidneys are no longer able to get rid of water or fluid from their bodies the way they normally would, those patients are limited in how much water or fluid they can safely drink. And so when they eat more salt, they get thirstier. And being thirsty is really hard to limit how much fluid you drink. Overall, in the bigger picture, we're looking at helping patients uh, keep their hearts healthier over time because drinking excess amounts of fluid does damage dialysis patients' hearts. Your dietitians have an enormous responsibility to be aware of the dialysis process that the patient is experiencing and what their numbers are and also to consult with the staff too. Am I on the right track there? Definitely. And I think they do make an effort to learn a lot, not just about nephrology nutrition, but about kidney disease and the dialysis process, the treatments. Uh, and that really positions them well to be resources for the rest of their clinical teams, as well as for their nephrologists. You spend a lot of time on the road. In fact, you've said that it is a challenge for me because I have oversight of a large group of dietitians. But I know that when I have one-to-one -one contacts with people and identify those behaviors and activities for recognition, that that has an impact of folks feeling like I'm, I'm really engaged with them, that I'm really paying attention. I'm not a detached leader sitting in an office somewhere. Getting to know dietitians on a one-to-one -one basis must be a very crucial and challenging, but absolutely necessary part of your job. It's so rewarding. And you're right, it is challenging. Primarily, it's challenging because it does take time. There's no other way. We are a large and growing department. But I learn so much when I'm able to spend time in the field and, as you mentioned, meet with people one on one. You know, it helps me fine tune. Uh, what what their priorities are, what their needs are, and also what's what's going on. I always learn things when I'm out in the field talking to to our dietitians, uh, and and I love that. Well, there are also other rewards. For example, there have been a series of wildfires in California over the last two years, really devastating wildfires, and you had several dietitians who were personally affected by the fires who were evacuated and were unable to come to work. However you did need help with patient care because the dialysis process, regardless of fires or a natural disaster, does go on. What was your experience with these dietitians when you called them up and said, uh, I know these are difficult times and challenging for everyone, but could you uh, make a special effort to come on in? The response that resulted, I think, really exemplified the type of teamwork that I hope to see and try to foster in my department. We did have a number of dietitians who were evacuated and were not able to come to work, who were worried about, you know, their own future and, and their homes. And, you know, I really wanted to be able to put their minds at ease so they didn't have to also think about coming to work and taking care of their patients. All of our centers were operational during that time. And so we did have patients who needed care and also needed people just to talk to and to reassure them. 
When I reached out for assistance, I was thrilled with the response and people were very willing to juggle their own heavy duty responsibilities at that time to make sure that the patients in the North Bay were well taken care of. We have discussed on Neff Talk a book called Oh Great One, the best-selling business book about the awesome power of recognition. You had a lot of folks to recognize after these events, along with your usual recognition efforts. In my experience, a lot of dietitians do the work they do because it's what's right for the patients. It's their passion. They're not always looking for recognition or and may not like to toot their own horns. But by that token, we want to, to shine a light to recognize success. But I think we also can learn a lot from others' successes. You have said that one size of recognition doesn't fit all. Based on that, what have you learned from these experiences about recognizing people and giving praise either collectively or individually? It's really made me stop and think. While I've had the awareness that recognition is most meaningful and successful when it's individualized, that's kind of a a general nebulous concept. But as a leader, I'm called upon to really translate that into action. And I think that's where getting to know people as individuals, as well as getting to understand our staff, our team as groups, you know, whether that's by region, by area of interest within practice, maybe by generation, helps me to know how to recognize them in a way that's meaningful to them and is comfortable for them. I mean, some people would love to run up on stage and pump their fist and go, yes, this is great, and wave their trophy, you know, like an Academy Award scene. Yeah. And for other folks, a very simple, thoughtful, mindful, handwritten thank you note is the best prize of all. How do you determine which is right? Yeah, I definitely have some of those fist pumpers and uh, also some who would just super uncomfortable even being asked to go on stage. In my experience and in my opinion, you can never go wrong with a handwritten note. And so... Oh, you're absolutely right. Oh, so sweet. I have saved all of mine. (laughs) It's so touching when people take the time and write a note that is not generic, but that is very, very specific in mentioning an event or an incident. Do you do that? Absolutely. So regardless of what other recognition I may have planned, uh, I always try to send a, a note or a card. But I think for the dietitians, there's also some value in the recognition being more visible to their teams in their centers. Usually there's only one dietitian per center and the rest of their teammates may not, you know, totally get the work that they do or the contribution they make. And so I generally will send a, a note of thanks, something visually pretty and, or funny. I do have a lot of... <laughs> punny cards because you know who, who doesn't appreciate a, a cheap pun but something that you know to send them to their center so that maybe it's something that they can have in their workspace and, and maybe it's a reminder that somebody is out there noticing what they do and so I, I've really tried to make that a part of my practice. You have a wonderful perspective and a tremendous amount of passion and frankly empathy for what your dietitians experience on a daily basis. You also understand the awesome power of recognition, which is one of the reasons that we're here today. Rory, thank you so much for joining us today on Neftalk. It's been my pleasure, Chris. 